Oh, what is going on, my dudes? What's going on, bros? What's going on, fellas? Oh, man. I had a video planned, and uh, I needed to do some work to my RA. And for some reason, the battery died, and it just goes to show how little I drive that thing. So I can't find my jumper box or my jumper cable, so I'm assuming they're in storage. So I'm gonna head over to storage and do a little bit different of a video, but kind of an interesting topic on one of the on one of the forums that I go on is uh, is the E36 M3 a good cheap car? So. Let me explain about what I mean by that. So the E36, you can find in such a wide price range. I got mine for 4,500 bucks. And looking back, I should have been able to get it for a little bit less knowing what was wrong with it when I bought it. But I knew, I found out what was wrong with it after I bought it. So I didn't, I knew some of the things that were wrong with it, but not everything. Drive proper here. So, the debate on one of the forums that I go on is, should, is it worth buying uh, like a three, $3,000, $4,000 E36 M3? And I have kind of an interesting viewpoint on that topic because that's exactly what I did like exactly so there's different levels of cheap car in my opinion one would be the cheap car that is mechanically sound and has a ton of body body damage body paneling dents or rust uh, anything like that then there would be the mechanic special the one that has a blown motor or thing, random things wrong with it and the owner doesn't want to deal with it, he's over, he's got a new car and he just wants to get rid of it. This car isn't, I wouldn't consider it a mechanic special. Uh, the owner of this car, it had a dead battery when I got it uh, and he knew the alternator was bad. So there are those two things. He, he didn't drive it for a while. He got a new Tesla trainer and um, just didn't really want to work on it. So he was asking, I think, like 55 or 6, somewhere around there. Um, and I think I offered 4 and um, he countered with 4500 And I mean, I'm, I wasn't going to squabble over that. So I accepted and we agreed at 4500 And I basically jumped the car and got it home. I mean, it died halfway through because the alternator was bad, so I had to jump it again, and it was a process, and it was a, the start of this project. But when you're getting specifically an M3 for that cheap, let's, if you're getting one with body damage and rust, you know what the problems are. I'm not a body panel, I'm not a body expert, I'm not a rust guy. I specifically was looking for a clean body car, something more that needed some mechanical help that I could have fun with. So let's focus on that. If you get a high mileage, first off, any cheap E36 M3, super cheap, we're talking, you know, again, we're talking three grand, four grand, somewhere like that. Any of those cars are going to have higher mileage or they're going to have something wrong with them. So let's say that that was a combo of the two. If they have higher mileage, more than likely there's gonna be a few key things. All right, let's see we're just doing it. More than likely there's gonna be a few key things that are wrong with the car just inherently, just because of the high mileage. Mine, for example, the steering rack, the factory steering rack, felt like I was driving an 18-wheeler. I mean, there was play. You could probably go from, from 
noon to three o'clock without the steering wheel doing anything. There was just a ton of play in the steering wheel. So that's one thing. I replaced that with a ZHP rack. I paid a little too much for my ZHP rack, but I got a really good rack from a reputable source. So right off the bat, if you're having a, if you're looking at a higher mileage car, steering rack could be something that's going out. That's going to be a couple hundred bucks. Uh, I had to replace the alternator. That was another couple hundred bucks, you know, with the core charge. It's called, it was like 150 or something like that. So right off the bat, you know you're going to be into the car at least a couple hundred dollars just to get it back to, I wouldn't, well, yeah, just drivable shape. Um, there's going to be things wrong with a $3,000 E36 M3. There just is. After crawling under this car, it has 230, ooh, ooh, 233,323 miles right now. That's really weird. 233323. Weird. So, after crawling under this car and looking at it when I was replacing the steering rack and the all, well, the steering rack mostly, uh, almost most of the joint or most of the boots are gone on this car. So, when I replaced the steering rack, I had to get new inner tie rod, new tie rod ends, um, and looking at the control arm, the boots on those were completely just annihilated. Um, I think tie rod ends come with it. Yeah, tie rod ends come with new boots. So the tie rod end boots were shot. The control arm boots I haven't replaced yet. Those were shot. The uh, tie rod end links? No, the sway bar end links? That, those were shot too, but I replaced that when I replaced the suspension. When you're getting a car with 200 plus thousand miles, you can be pretty darn certain there's going to be a lot of the boots and things like that are going to be torn and need to be replaced. Now, is it an absolute necessity? Is it something that has to be done? No, it doesn't. To be honest, I don't know what would happen if you just rocked busted boots forever. I have no idea. I'm sure they would fail at some point. I don't know what would happen. Um, but in terms of the motor, this motor still runs strong. This is a 95 with uh, the S50 motor in it. And I did an oil change. I mean, as far as I know, it runs strong. I haven't done a compression test or anything like that because I plan on replacing the motor with the S54 or with the S54 swap. So mechanically, and from what I've read, these engines, if you take care of them, they, they last a while. Uh, they're definitely 200 plus thousand mile motors. So that, if it's taken care of, shouldn't be too big an issue. Now, that being said, I do have some oil leaks under this car and I have seen some coolant leaks down there. Not tons, but I have seen a few drips when I'm under there. It's coming from somewhere. Luckily for me, when I do the E36, or the, uh, luckily for me, when I do the S54 swap, I'm going to replace all the cooling stuff as well. So that'll be taken care of. But if you're buying a two, three thousand dollar E36 M3, you can be pretty certain it I wouldn't go into looking for a sub 5,000 or even I'm not an E36 expert, but I would say even maybe sub ten thousand dollar E36 M3. Uh to be your daily and to be a reliable daily. I don't, I don't think that's really, uh, I don't think that's something you can expect. I mean, as far as interior, um, as you can tell, I've ripped out most of mine because it needed to be updated. All the interior panels were peeling. Uh, again, it's not a big deal if you're not looking to rebuild a car, but if you're looking for a, a cheap E36, odds are the interior is gonna be in rough shape. Mine definitely was. Uh, the rear panels, I had those reupholstered because they were peeling up. The front door panels, uh, I just got new ones because the front door panel vinyl was peeling up. Uh, I just haven't, I haven't put my new ones on yet because I'm, I'm getting new speakers for the entire car. The, 
speakers, all the speakers, they may have worked, I have no idea, but they're basically disintegrated. Um, so things like that. If you're looking for an old BMW, an old E36 M3, and it's gonna be cheap, all that stuff is either needs to be replaced soon. I mean, that we're going on a 24 year old car. Uh, it needs to be replaced soon or just not used, I guess, if you're talking stereo. One thing about the 95, my dash is not bubbling, but warping. My dash is warping. Uh, so I'm going to replace this dash. Um, yeah, the dash is just not in the best condition. Uh, and basically all of the A, I literally have replaced A, B, and C panels. The only panel I haven't replaced is this one right here. And it definitely is a different color than the rest, so I may replace that one just because it's bugging me. Uh, but if you plan on getting one of these cars, sub $5,000, and think that there aren't going to be things that need to be replaced, you're, you're kidding yourself. There's no way you're gonna do that. They're phenomenal cars when they're done and when they're uh, when everything is done properly, not even done properly, because I'm not gonna say that I've done this all properly. But they're just awesome little cars. I'm having a blast with this thing. I love driving this car. Uh, but again, I put, I have a video that I'll link up, up here, up there. Uh, I go through how much I've spent on this car and I've already spent, I know it's north of $6,000 on this and to be fair, I didn't need to do, I didn't need to spend that. Oh, I know it is because that was before coilovers and stuff. So I didn't need to spend that much money. Um, I replaced a lot of body pieces that uh, if you're just looking to buy this car for fun and you're not really looking to rebuild it or have a project, I didn't need to do that. That wasn't something that was a, a necessity. Uh, but I wanted to do it because it's what I want to do for this project. So again, if you're looking for just a fun little car to go beat on and maybe it's a little project, maybe you don't really care about it, you don't need to replace that stuff and you can save yourself a lot of money. Um, but when it comes to the mechanical stuff, I mean, things like the steering rack, things like the alternator, uh, cooling, that type of stuff, that's all stuff that's going to need to get replaced on a cheap, higher mileage E36 M3, just, just is. And again, you might get lucky and you might get one that, like the steering rack may not need to be replaced, but I'll tell you what, the steering, replacing the steering rack on this car was by far the best thing I've done besides just making it run, which was an alternator. <laughs> the, replacing the steering rack was the best thing I've done on this car. It made the biggest improvement ever. Huge, huge improvement. So for me, it was a decision between this and a, a cheap S2000. And the cheapest S2000 I could really find at the time when I was looking was roughly 10 grand, I believe. And I got this for half. I'm at basically a cheap S2000 cost right now weird to think about but I'm at basically a, a very cheap S2000 cost and to be honest I, I'm having an absolute blast rebuilding this thing but again that's personal preference and there are other cheap cars that you might be able to buy that you might need you might not have to do as much to as this car um, so it really is personal preference I'm guessing the guys that are asking should I buy this cheap car should I buy this cheap e36 m3 I have a little bit of a, a passion for the BMW or the e36 brand or the BMW brand or the e36 model uh, because again there are other cheap cars that may require less maintenance um, or less upkeep in general but if you're looking for a cheap E36 M3 and you find one that's under five grand, under seven grand, it's super cheap, just know there's going to be things that you're gonna to have to do to it. And you can do them inexpensively, 
don't be surprised if you have to throw at least a couple thousand bucks into it to make it decent. And again, I haven't touched the engine or anything like that. I'm pretty sure the engine mounts are broken on this. I'm cracked at least for sure. Um, there's a lot of things I still haven't touched yet, which they're going to cost a lot more money. <laughs> So don't be surprised or don't go into getting one of these cars thinking it's going to be a $3,000 sports car that you can just go rip on and beat the, the crap out of and it's going to be awesome. You're definitely going to have some work to do, but I will say from a noob's perspective, a first time E36 owner's perspective, there's a lot of information out there. The community is really good and they're fairly user friendly to work on they're kind of self-explanatory they're not they're they're good to work on they're fun cars to work on but remember you're going to be working on a 23 24 year old car so it's going to be a little frustrating at times but anyway guys i hope this video i hope you like this video if you're looking at a cheap e36 m3 know that they are doable there is life in these little cars. They're fun. They're really, a, they're a fun, fun car to have. Um, but there is going to be some work involved. Trust me. I know firsthand. So smash that subscribe button. If you're new to the channel, guys, uh, smash the like button. If you've been here before or smash that like button or give this video a like, if you wouldn't mind, um, got a lot more stuff coming up with this, got a lot more stuff coming up with the R8. And I will see you guys on the next video. Peace.